Sports director Brad Johansson with the stories behind the scores. Evening everyone. Mixed results in Reds pregame workouts. Gabe White's broken toe still causing problems for him. He's not ready to go, but Barry Larkin strained Achilles healed enough for him to return to the lineup tonight. Jim Bowden on a phone as always still trying to make the deals. That'd be a two for one, right? Jim's boys getting started early in the first. Junior with two men on. Rip through the hole. Larkin and Boone come home. Two zip. Then in the second, Jason LaRue deep and gone. His sixth on the year. It is three zip for Ryan Dempster. Then in the third, all heck breaks loose. Four zip. Wild pitch. Here comes Walker. Laduca flips it over Ishii's head. Here comes LaRue from second. He's in there, six zip. Larkin would walk. Aaron Boone. Ah, uh, goodbye. His 15th. It is eight to nothing. Then in the fourth, Brandon Larson with Kearns aboard. High and deep and gone. Larson's third on the year. Dunn adds his 22nd on the year. That's the kind of support Ryan Dempster needs to get his first win as a red. 12 4 year final. Each time I've gone out there, I've just tried to do as, do whatever I could to, to help the team, you know, and give them a chance to win. And uh, I've been doing that tonight. You know, the guys made it easy. They went out and scored a, a whole bunch of runs and just kind of uh, had to just go out there and, and hold the lead down. And, uh, you know, we did that. We won the game. You know, everybody just went out there and, and, and swung the bat. And, uh, you know, Ishii got in, had some trouble tonight early on finding the zone, and we were able to take advantage of it. One roster move, Gabe White comes off the DL. Chris Reitzman gets sent to AAA to make room. And the Reds play with what they've got for the rest of the year. Moeller versus Nomo tonight at Synergy Field. Reds start in the first one more time. Booney, this is a great bunt. Watch the head first slide to beat the tag. That leaves two guys on for Junior. And Junior will come through. RBI double. This will bring home Walker and Boone. It's two zip good guys. Moeller does hit the wall, though, in the fourth. Paul LaDuca, deep and gone. That's two to one. Next batter would be Sean Green. Deep and gone. Back to back to tie the game, but there's more to come. Same inning. Greg Zelonic, Beltry aboard. This one's just going to go for a double. Moeller, four runs, six innings, seven hits. 4-2 Dodgers. It's 4-3 in the eighth. Sullivan to Adrian Beltre. Gone. First to two for him. Dodgers had four more in the eighth, two in the ninth, and the Reds get drilled 11-5. I'd like to have one pitch back, and it'd be the pitch to um, Sean Green. I lift it up. Oh. Out over the plate, and he drove it, and, um, you know, it's as it is here, ball carry. You know that before the Reds took the field against the Dodgers this afternoon, Reds general manager Jim Bowden was talking with reporters about the player strike. Now, Bowden said something that he now regrets. Jim Bowden and one of the Reds owners talked here on Channel 12. But this is Bowden's quote from this afternoon regarding the player strike. If they walk out, make sure it's September 11th. Be symbolic. Let Donald fear he's the players' union rep, or players' union uh, uh, chief, excuse me, drive the plane right into the building if that's what they want to do. As I mentioned, Jim and a Reds owner talk with us after the game today. It came up really wrong, and, you know, humor like that's not funny. And, and again, I just really regret it. I mean, sometimes we have bad sense of humor, but there's still no excuse for it. And all I can do is apology, uh, apologize. I wish I could take the words back that I used. Um, but that's already been said, and so all I can do is tell everyone that I made a mistake, and I hope people will forgive me. I am shocked by the insensitivity of these remarks uh, by the general manager of the Cincinnati Reds today. As an owner of the Cincinnati Reds, uh, I am appalled uh, that this uh, continuing stream of insensitivities by our general manager is permitted um, uh, to, to, to exist. More to come. Meanwhile, on the field today, hot day for the Reds and the Dodgers. Starter Elmer descends, falls behind in the fourth. Adrian Beltre doubles the left. Tyler Houston scores. Dodgers go up one to nothing. Descends leaves this ball game after the fourth. He strains his groin. The Reds' top pitcher this season will be re-examined in two days. Now on to the eighth. Dave Hansen pinch hit home run off Danny Graves. This gives the Dodgers a two to nothing lead. And when Gabe White enters, relieving Graves in the ninth, Dave Roberts greets him with a triple to right field. Two more come home. Dodgers build a 4 to nothing lead, but the Reds put on their rally caps in the bottom of the ninth, starting with the hot-hitting Aaron Boone, crashing this two-run homer to right field. That cuts the deficit in half. Dodgers 4-2. to two. Then pitcher Eric Gagne nails Adam Dunn. Watch here as the pitcher. I don't think this is intentional. He hits him on the elbow. The umpire does think it's intentional. He ejects Gagne, and the pitcher goes wild. 
Adam Dunn, meanwhile, heads to first base. And then with two outs, Jason LaRue comes through, doubles the left field. That drives in Dunn and Austin Kearns. The game is tied at four apiece. We go on to extra innings. And in the 13th, Ken Griffey Jr., who entered the game as a pinch hitter, blasts a two-run homer, gives the Reds the incredible 6-4 win over the Dodgers. As long as you win, you know, no matter how long it takes, as long as we get the W, I think that's the important thing. We'd have played five more, and we got the W just as much, just as nice as if we played nine. Baseball tonight, we'll keep you up to date on that game. First of four with the Yanks and Angels. Now to the Dodgers and the Reds. This is one of the wilder games of the day in the eighth inning. Eric Gagne comes on, gets Barry Larkin to fly out. So he gets the out there. And here in the ninth inning, it's a 4 nothing lead with one on. Aaron Boone cranks that out. So it's a 4-2 ball game, but still, you know, Reds are down by two. Next batter, Adam Dunn, first pitch, hits him. Gagne immediately ejected by Dan Iosonia, the home plate umpire. Immediately tossed out. Well, this is absolutely ridiculous. There is no way in the world that Eric Gagne wants to put the tying run at the plate in the ninth inning. If he's trying to hit him here, I'm President Bush. No chance. You can play hell in the chief right now. That's it, I won't. Gagne, you know, incensed to this, said, you know, has this guy been around before? He would say after the game. He had to come out. So Jesse Orozco is brought in. And Orozco comes on. Ken Griffey Jr. is on to pinch hit, Buck. Well, Orozco has been a master against left-handers late in his career, and he keeps everything away from Junior. Slider off the plate. Griffey looking away, takes another slider off the plate. This time he gets a curveball, fouls it off. But 45-year-old Jesse Orozco strikes out Ken Griffey Jr. He gets his man. Bottom of the ninth. Now it's still 4-2, two, two on, two out. Jason LaRue gets Giovanni Carrara in the left field. No, doing some damage. One run will score. Here comes the tying run. Two runs will score. Dunn and Kearns come in. 4-4. Four, four. Watch this ball. Just fair stays in. Now go to the bottom of the 13th. Omar Dahl versus Ken Griffey Jr. Goodbye. Cincinnati just won the ball game on Junior's fourth homer of the year. A painful look. One shot right there. Reds take two out of three. Dodgers blow a 4 0 ninth inning lead. Griffey, uh, nice to see. They're like, hey, who is this guy that just hit that out? He hasn't played too much this year. Yeah, he sure hasn't. He's had another injury plagued season in Cincinnati, but a healthy Ken Griffey Jr. down the stretch to complement the young hitters, Austin Kern and Adam Dunn, certainly give them the offense. And now, if they can get some consistent pitching from their starters, utilize a very capable bullpen, their offense should be productive enough with Griffey in the lineup to make a run at that postseason. Yeah, the Dodgers, though, very hot after this one, especially the ejection of their elite closer. It's ridiculous. Nobody would try their dying run, put the guy on, the guy on base, and, you know, a home run will tie the game. I mean, I'm the closer. I'm not supposed to do that. And, I mean, it's just, that's just a joke. It's, it's kind of, it's getting funny. I mean, it's getting ridiculous. I mean, it's just bad call. I mean, everybody in the world knew it as unintentional, and I have no idea where he's, what he was thinking or where he was. I mean, there's no way he is in, is in the game. That's bad. Last night he told me I had a day off, and I was sitting in the clubhouse eating nachos and <laughs> getting fat, and Gus says, uh, we're going to have you pinch hit. I was like, huh? Uh, you know, fortunately, I got a couple swings under my belt before I came up, and just tried to hit the ball solid, and he got a pitch up, and I happened to hit it out. Plus, the Reds take the game in the series.